Morning boys and girls, might be afternoon for you, sports fans, Dan Jaddy OD, and I'm with Gareth Allen. Hello. And what do you do, mate? I'm a technical lead at the Department of Customs and Border Protection, specialising in SAP workflow and doing web stuff. So you're, you're, you're one of those buggers who tries to keep buggers like me out, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah. Big. But that's your part-time job. What's your real job? Um, well, during the day I'm a farmer. Right. I'm a cattle farmer. And? And... Don't you breed stud something or else? I breed stud, build a Galloway cattle, yeah. Yeah. I'm quite happy with that. It, <laughs> me, it meshes well with IT. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you've been talking about, you've, you've been talking today about two things. One is uh, project failure, how to screw things up on a design side, but how you can make it successful, right? Yes. And you stated something which for me is, is fundamentally obvious and yet probably most people miss it, and that is about getting users involved, isn't it? Absolutely. So, so just very quickly, just, you know, why did it fail in the first place, and what, what was it that you did that made it successful second time around? Okay, well, why it failed in the first place is we approached the problem like a normal IT problem. Hmm. We discussed it, we talked with stakeholders, we drew up a specification, hmm. we gave it to a programmer. Hmm. At no stage, was the end user involved in the process mm. and at no stage was the end user considered. Mm. So when they were given the solution, mm. one, it wasn't relevant to them or the context and two, they hated it. <laughs> Doesn't that happen all the time? Well, it does, but this was a real hate. Right. This was a take us outside and hang us. Oh, really? It was that bad? It was it? to the point where, as I said in the, mm. in the presentation, they were not going to use it. Okay. So what did we do about it? Well, the first thing we did is we threw it out and we brought the actual end users, mm. the people that weren't considered as stakeholders, mm. and we brought them in to be the key design people mm. for that process. Mm. We then took computers out of the picture mm. and we used a pen and a paper, something which is non-threatening, which allowed them to engage their imaginations mm. and work out a process which gave them the application they wanted. Mm. And it was only after all of that, and in conjunction with the developer and the users, mm. that they actually put the application together. Right. How did that change things for the developer? Because, I mean, developers are so used to just, right, I know what I'm doing, bang, I'm, I'm off. Well, he hated it. He right. hated it at the beginning. Um, it's very, very difficult for people who are used to being there, doing the tricks, looking after the toys, mm. to share with other people. Mm. And especially when the other people they don't actually see as being in the developer know. Mm. But over time, both sides ended up, the users ended up learning a fair bit about what we do. Mm. But they ended up learning a bit about what they do and mm. what they bring to the table. So does that mean then that in one sense the, uh, the developers became more commercially aware? Because my experience with developers is that, that by and large they're not really commercially aware. Give them a hairy ass problem, thank you very much, that's what I'm going to deal with. But you know, the minute that you start talking business to them, they, they start getting a bit worried. But absolutely, and that's what they've got to start doing. This whole process has shown us that we end up with a much better mm. um, outcome if we involve mm. the end user. So if we if you like, commercialise what we're doing. Mm, okay. And what about for the future of development? Because, I mean, this seems to me to be something that's going to be fundamentally necessary going forward. Because, um, you know, I've just come back from a different conference where I saw a tablet app. It's very, very simple. But it was absolutely self-evident what it did. I mean, you know, you could, you could give it to an untrained monkey and they'd be able to use it. You know what I mean? Well, that's what we need to achieve out of business systems as well. Right. The people that use business systems are generally not systems people. They're right. people of business hires to do a job. Mm. Our applications either complement what they do mm. or they get in the way. Mm. If we don't involve them in it, then we will end up getting in the way and we'll just become another um, Squeaky roadblock. Wheel. Squeaky wheel. Yeah. Right. Okay. And is this, uh, you know, having had the experience uh, this time around, is it, you're going to repeat it in other projects? We certainly will repeat it in other projects. As I said earlier, we will mm. be very targeted in how we do it until mm. we make sure we've ironed out all the problems. Mm. Um, we're also mindful it takes a bit longer. Right. But the rewards are there if you want to actually take the time over it. Okay. And the rewards are essentially that developers learn something, end users actually use what you've produced, right? and a better experience all the way around. Absolutely, and people end up enjoying what they're doing rather mm. than just doing what they're doing. Right. Innovation doesn't always have to be code, does it? No. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Gareth. Thank Great you, to Dennis. see you, mate. Lovely. Nice one. Thanks.